What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. You guys know the drill. We're going over the week 20 schedule guide. We're going to go over the teams with the best and worst schedules, some new must add players, and also the streamers to help you maximize your games. I do want to say, I know some of you have been asking for a playoff schedule guide that is coming out this week. So stay tuned for that. I've just been busy, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a good one and it should come out this week. To start things off, I just want to talk about some must add players. Some of these guys have talked about quite a bit. Some of them are new, but generally these are just players that I think are good ads. And I think their roster percentage on a platform like Yahoo is too low. First off, we have Sean Monahan. I know in a lot of serious leagues, he's already been picked up, but I had to mention him. He's playing really well on the Jets and he's really transforming their power play. Since joining the Jets, their power play has tripled in terms of percentage. So um, obviously that's not sustainable, but I do think Monahan is helping this power play and he's gonna be pretty good for the rest of the year. Next up, we have Tom Wilson of the Washington Capitals. Wilson's been disappointing this year, I understand. His production has not been great. Always puts up great peripherals, so that's kind of the safe floor that he has baked in. But we just learned that with Oshie out, he's on the first line in the first line power play. So yeah, we don't know how serious the TJ Oshie injury is, but based off the initial reports that we have, he's probably out long-term. So Wilson should be back on this first line power play and back in the top six. If he's on the first line with Ovechkin and Strom, that's awesome. And I think he does have a chance to bounce back with this deployment. Next, we got Dylan Strom. This one's obvious, guys. He's playing fantastic as of late. Ovechkin's been really picking it up, which has certainly helped Strom. But I think Strom is just super underrated in general, guys. If you're looking at his totals last year, he had like 60-something points despite averaging 16-something minutes a game. So he's getting more ice time now. First line, first line power play. I think he's going to be great for the rest of the year and the Capitals have a great playoff schedule. So yeah, in my opinion, Strom is a fantastic ad. Next, we have Boone Jenner. This is just a guy that I think is criminally underrated. He gets good deployment. He puts up amazing peripherals. He can score goals. And uh, yeah, I just think that his roster percentage is too low. So if he is somehow available on your wire, people are sleeping on him, go pick him up. Next, we got Troy Terry. This one's pretty obvious too, guys. If you're looking at the last like month for Troy Terry, he's been on absolute fire. I think that he's an underrated player, gets great deployment. I know he's on the Ducks, but he should be pretty good for the rest of the year, so take a look at him. Next, we got Shane Pinto. This guy's been very good since returning from his suspension, and what I was surprised about is his ice time. Like, he's getting 18, 19 minutes per game. If you're looking at the last couple of games, he's getting these type of minutes, and that's really impressive. And another thing for Pinto is that he's on the first-line power play. They have Tim Stutzla on the second-line power play. I don't necessarily understand that decision. They have Norris on the first line power play as well. But um, if P Pinto keeps getting these type of minutes and on the first line power play, he is an absolute must add player. He also puts up really good peripherals too. So yeah, Pinto, in my opinion, super low roster percentage, fantastic ad. Next, we got Zach Rowinski. He's not really a new must add player, but in my opinion, he's super underrated, guys. He just scored two goals the other night. He always puts up good peripherals and he takes a lot of shots. So he should be like an 80%, 90% roster percentage player on Yahoo when he's not. So if he is available because people just don't understand that he's really good, then please take a look at him. Next up, we have Brandon Montour. I've talked about this guy enough, so I will not waste your time. But if he is available, pick him up, guys. He's getting the same deployment as last season on this Panthers offense. And we're already starting to see him bounce back. So I'm expecting a strong finish for Brandon Montour. Next up, we have Joseph Wolf, the Toronto Maple Leafs. He is in the AHL right now on a conditioning stint. He played one game last night, I believe. It might have been two nights ago. And he played fantastic, guys. He put up a lot of saves. He made some fantastic saves as well. And I know Sammy's played really well. I understand this. So it might be a little bit of an issue, you know, when Wool gets called out. There could be a split, a little bit of competition there. I don't love that. Obviously, in a points league, you really want a guy to get the majority of starts. But uh, yeah, I mean, with Wool. When he was healthy, he was playing fantastic. He was clearly better than Sammy. And I do think that if he plays like his former self before the injury, there's a chance he becomes the number one starter once again. So please take a look at Wool. Take a gamble on him. Take a chance. And it could pay off. Next, we got Gabriel Velarde of the Winnipeg Jets. Velarde is a very streaky player. He'll have a couple of games where he has like three or four multi-point games and then cool off for like eight games after that. But with Velarde, I think he's a super talented player. His deployment is great. He gets, you know, top six minutes on the first line power play. And with the way that he's very streaky, he can help you win weeks. So I think Velarde is a great add. 
And um, yeah, if he's available, take a look at him. Next, we got Anthony Sorelli of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Sorelli has been playing really good lately, and he's also getting a ton of minutes. That's not the reason why he's a must-add player, though. The reason that he's a must-add player is because he's on the first line power play, the best power play in the league, the Tampa Bay Lightning. And obviously, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict how long he's going to be on this first line power play, but that is huge. Um, you know, Nick Paul got bumped down to the second unit. We'll see what happens, but if Sorelli can manage to stay on this first line power play, I think he's gonna be really good for the rest of the year. Next up, we have Arturi Lekanen. He's been a must-add player in my videos over the last couple of weeks. I don't really have anything new to say, but um, just that he's underrated and that he gets really good minutes. He's on the first line power play, one of the best power plays in the league in the Colorado Avalanche. And I think he's gonna be really good for the rest of the year. Moving on, we have some more ads that I like. Yuras Slavkovsky, this one's obvious, guys. I doubt he's available in any serious league, um, unless you're in a really shallow league. But I had to include him because his roster percentage is still pretty low. If you're in a casual league and you know he could be available somehow, then yes, pick him up. His deployment is cemented. First line, first line power play. Good peripherals. Just a very solid player for the rest of the season. Next up, we have Ricard Raquel, the Pittsburgh Penguins. Gensel is injured. He's out week to week, and there's a chance that he could get moved as well. But with Gensel out, Raquel was on the first line and the first line power play with Sidney Crosby. He puts up good peripherals. He gets good minutes. And I think he's going to be a pretty solid player for the rest of the year in fantasy. Next up, we have Wyatt Johnson of the Dallas Stars. What I will say about Wyatt Johnson is that I understand he's on the third line right now. They had him on the first line for a little bit. They kind of been mixing up their lines. Sometimes he'll be on the first line. Sometimes he'll be on the third line. I don't love that. But what I do love is his production and also the fact that some of the games that we've seen recently, he's getting serious minutes. I tweeted about this on my Twitter slash X at Fired Up Fantasy. If you want to give me a follow, I post a lot of up-to-date information on there. But he had like back-to-back -back games where he played over 21 minutes. And he's just a young player that looks really good out there. So I think that Wyatt Johnson's gonna be pretty good for the rest of the year. Next up, we have Jack Roslevic of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Currently, he's on the first line. He's getting really good minutes and he's also producing. So in a deeper league, I think he's a fantastic option. I will say I wouldn't get my hopes up too much with Roslevic because the Blue Jackets really like to mix up their lines. They really like to give players good deployment and then bad deployment. So we'll see how it all plays out, but for now, things are looking promising. Next up, we have Connor McMichael of the Washington Capitals. Now, I do expect him to cool down. I think he had back-to-back -back games where he had two goals. Obviously, his recent production is not sustainable. But what I do like about McMichael is that he's getting better minutes as of late. And it seems like his deployment is pretty cemented on the second line. So um, he could be a pretty good option in a deeper league. Next, we have Barrett Hayden of the Arizona Coyotes. Listen, guys, I'm not saying Hayden is going to be some sort of fantastic player. He missed a lot of time. He is rusty. However, I do think that he's pretty underrated and in a deeper league, he could pay off. So if you're in like a 14 or 16 team league and it's hard to find value on the waiver wire, Hayden could be a good option. I do expect him to get back on the first line power play at some point, maybe back on the first line with Clayton Keller. I don't know what will happen, but I do think he's underrated in a deeper league, so please take a look at him. Lastly, we got two more players, Matthew Joseph of the Ottawa Senators. He's been producing really good lately, and currently he's on the first line with Tim Stutzla and Claude Drew. So, um, you know, obviously I don't know how long this deployment is going to last, but in a deeper league where it's hard to find value on the waiver wire, Joseph could be a fantastic option in the short term. Then lastly, we have Logan Stankovin of the Dallas Stars. He has been producing very well in the AHL, and they just brought him up to the Stars playing on the third line with Wyatt Johnston. This is not a shallow league option, guys. This is a deeper league option. I do think he will be an interesting player in the future, but I'm not expecting him to get a ton of minutes, you know, just getting called out from the AHL. So deeper league option, take a look at him if you are in a deeper league. All right, moving on to the schedule. We have the teams of the most game slash off nights. We have some pretty good options here in terms of teams that have players you can stream. And the best options I would say are the Washington Capitals and the Edmonton Oilers. These are the only two teams this week that have four games and three off nights. I will say the Oilers don't have the best opponent goals against average. They have some tough opponents, but we are talking about the Edmonton Oilers here. So, you know, they can score a lot of goals in any given night. The Capitals, I think there's a lot of good streaming options on the Capitals, which I will talk about in a little bit. And they also have a very good opponent goals against average with these off nights. So Capitals players are great options. Then we have a tier break. We have three teams that have four games and two off nights. Still solid for maximizing your games. These teams are the Arizona Coyotes, the Ottawa Senators, and the Los Angeles Kings. Lastly, we have some teams that have four games and one off night. Not the best for maximizing your games, but if you have players on these teams, 
you could probably have a decent amount of games this week. These teams are the Sharks, the Wild, the Stars, the Jets, the Penguins, and the Sabres. Next, we have the teams of the least amount of games. There are three teams this week that only played twice, and these teams are the Calgary Flames, the Chicago Blackhawks, and the New York Rangers. If you see right here, the Flames have a really bad opponent goals against average, so it might be tough if you have a lot of Calgary Flames players on your fantasy team. Next up, we have the teams of the easiest opponent record this week. The players on these teams could do well. The goalies on these teams could do well. And we basically have five teams here, New Jersey Devils, Colorado Avalanche, Vancouver Canucks, the Florida Panthers, and the Tampa Bay Lightning. Most of the goalies, the starting goalies on these teams are not available, but Nico Dawes could be a very solid option with Vanacek injured and them having a very good opponent record this week. On the flip side, we have the teams with the hardest opponent record. These teams are the New York Islanders, the Buffalo Sabres, the Seattle Kraken, the St. Louis Blues, and the Vegas Golden Knights. The goalies on these teams may underperform this week. We'll have to see what happens. Then we have the teams with the highest opponent goals against average this week. These teams are playing teams that let in a lot of goals, so the players on these teams should do pretty well. We have the Philadelphia Flyers, the National Predators, the San Jose Sharks, the Arizona Coyotes, and the New Jersey Devils. Now, I will say the Rangers and the Blackhawks, they actually have the highest opponent goals against average here, but I didn't want to list them because they only have two games, but keep that in mind as well. Then we have the teams with the lowest opponent goals against average. So these teams are playing teams that don't let in a lot of goals. These players could underperform this week. So keep this in mind, guys. We have the Calgary Flames, the Buffalo Sabres, the Edmonton Oilers, the Seattle Kraken, and the St. Louis Blues. Now is the part of the video where I give you guys the streamers to help you maximize your games for this week. Like I told you earlier, the two teams that have four games and three off nights this week are the Washington Capitals and the Edmonton Oilers. So pretty good options in terms of maximizing your games. I've listed this based how I rank them in fantasy, but it really depends on your league settings. So keep that in mind. Um, these are all players that are under 90% rostered. So obviously guys like Alexander Ovechkin won't be on here. If you're in a really shallow league and he's available, yes, he's a fantastic streaming option for this week. But yeah, let me list this off. First, we have Dylan Strome playing fantastic lately on the first line power play in the first line with Alexander Ovechkin. We have Evander Kane, great peripherals, good protection as well. Tom Wilson, really sneaky option this week if he is available. First line and first line power play with TJ Oshie injured. We have Warren Fogle, Connor McMichael, Max Pacioretty. Pacioretty don't love his minutes, but he still is on the first line power play. Um, we also have Matias Ekholm, Darnell Nurse, Corey Perry, Anthony Mantha, Rasmus Sandin, and Alexi Protoss. There's also some other deep league options if you're in a deeper league, like 16 teams or more, Cody Cece and Ryan McLeod. Lastly, we have the teams that have four games and two off nights. Not as good as the players that have four games and three off nights, but still good for maximizing your games. These are the players from the Arizona Coyotes, the Ottawa Senators, and the Los Angeles Kings. We have Lawson Krause, Matt Dumba, really good peripherals, those guys. And then the rest, you know, it's kind of scattered in terms of their deployment. It's hard to say how they will do. Dylan Gunther's on the first line right now in the first line power play. Could be a good option. Um, Sean Dursey's still on the first line power play. Schmaltz, he's on the third line now, which I don't love. Still on the first line power play though. Barrett Hayden, third line. I don't know. I think Hayden will bounce back soon. This week could be it, but we might have to wait a little bit until that happens. Matias Michelli, he's always pretty solid, but doesn't put up any peripherals. Logan Cooley on the first line with Clayton Keller, I believe. That's pretty good. JJ Moser, Nick Bukestad, Jason Zucker, uh, Alex Kerfoot, and Jake McBain. Then in terms of the players on the Senators, we have Claude Giroux, Thomas Shabbat, Shane Pinto, Josh Norris. Pinto and Norris are both on the first line power play, so keep that in mind. We have Jacob Chikorin, Drake Batherson, Jake Sanderson, who is also still on the first line power play. I like him and his peripherals as well lately. Uh, Matthew Joseph, who is on the first line right now with Tim Stutzla and Claude Giroux. Definitely an underrated option. We have Vladimir Tarasenko, Ridley Gregg, and Artem Zub. Lastly, we have players on the Los Angeles Kings. We have Adrian Kempe, Kevin Fiala. Fiala, I'm hoping he can bounce back soon, guys. He does have a goal in his last two games, but it's been pretty disappointing recently. Maybe this week is the week that he can finally pop off. We also have Quinton Byfield. He's been so good this year. What an incredible player. We have Drew Doughty, Trevor Moore, Anze Kopitar, Pierre-Louis Dubois. Dubois has really been heating up lately. I still don't love his minutes, but he's a good option, especially with his peripherals. We got Phil Deneau, Brant Clark, Alex Laferriere and Mikey Anderson. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I will catch you in the next one.